In the once tranquil town of Northbend, an uncanny shift in the atmosphere emerges. The serene ambiance of this otherwise peaceful place has been replaced by a discreet thrill, a whisper of anticipation that snakes through the silent streets. A peculiar phenomenon is in motion, as if the very air itself holds its breath awaiting the unfolding events. This quaint town, usually painted with the mundane shades of everyday life, is now pulsating with an unexpected rhythm of excitement. The arrival of the Carnival of the Carnival has sent waves of thrill, each pulse reverberating across the silent streets and into the hearts of the otherwise complacent inhabitants. A profound sense of anticipation has washed over the townsfolk, their faces glowing with a childlike innocence, their eyes sparkling with an unspoken expectation. The occurrence of such a spectacle is as rare as a blue moon, but when it does happen, it's a sight to behold. The carnival with its rainbow of colors, adrenaline-fueled rides, and kaleidoscope of radiant lights is a beacon of exuberance and life amongst the surrounding monotony. Against the stark backdrop of gray buildings and melancholic skies, the carnival erupts with vibrancy, like a solitary rose in a field of wilted daisies. The carnival workers, each adorned with their own unique charm and eccentricities, pull you into their enchanting world. The jugglers with their nimble hands and agile fingers manipulate the balls in the air with such raw skill, inspiring awe in every onlooker. The fortune tellers with their veiled eyes and cryptic tales of what was, what is and what is yet to be, draw you in with the tantalizing promise of the unexplored. The clowns, their faces painted with exaggerated expressions, bring forth peals of laughter that echo throughout the grounds, even managing to melt the hearts of the toughest among us. And yet, amidst the flood of bright lights and the symphony of laughter, a whisper of unease lingers. It is a feeling as enigmatic as a shadow at noon, an undercurrent of dread veiled beneath the surface of merriment. Could it be the grotesque shadows that seem to stretch unnaturally behind the vibrant tents? Or perhaps the hushed whispers shared between townsfolk that carry an undertone of alarm? It could be the laughter that abruptly fades into silence, or the smiles that never quite meet the eyes, leaving an uncanny chill in their wake. This unease is a mystery that hangs suspended in the air, as elusive as it is palpable. The North Bend Carnival is a paradox, a mosaic of joy and trepidation. It offers an escape from the monotony of the daily grind, a window into a world of enchantment and delight. It's a place where, in reality, cross paths, where the impossible seems within reach. But beneath this vibrant canvas there lies a deeper, darker reality. A truth concealed behind the mask of laughter. A secret that only the shadows dare whisper. As you wander through the carnival grounds, an unsettling chill shivers down your spine. A concoction of anticipation, intertwined with a sense of foreboding. But beneath the sparkle and laughter, an unspoken mystery lurks. A sinister secret itching to surface. As the carnival lights dance against the inky canvas of the night sky, painting a mesmerizing spectacle of color, there is a promise of an untold story, a hint of a conundrum yet to unravel. As the moon ascends above the fading sun, an uncanny transformation begins to permeate the carnival. The sun, retreating from its throne and surrendering to the moon, ushers in a phase of ominous darkness as the conviviality of, of the day clandestinely shifts into a foreboding, veiled night. The carnival, once a beacon of laughter and jubilation in daylight, ominously begins to transmogrify into an entity far more sinister, far more malevolent. The vivacious, pulse-quickening attractions that once induce squeals of delight transfigure grotesquely into horrifying spectacles that send your heart into overdrive with terror. The roller coasters, once synonymous with joy and thrill, begin to roar with a bone-chilling eeriness that cuts through the obsidian night, sending waves of shivers cascading down the spines of the spectators. Their silhouettes against the moonlit sky seem to take on monstrous forms, their previously gleaming tracks now a path of terror leading into the abyss. The once harmonious cacophony of laughter and thrilled screams from the riders are now replaced by an oppressive silence, punctuated only by the haunting wails of the midnight wind, wind echoing through the grounds like a ghostly lament. The funhouse mirrors, previously amusing with their warped reflections, now twist reality into unsettling and grotesque shapes. Their reflections are no longer harmless distortions but nightmarish apparitions gnawing away at any remnant of sanity. Every curve, every grin, every stare, they distort into horrendous nightmares, causing you to question the very fabric of your reality. 
the merry-go-round, an erstwhile symbol of childlike exuberance, spins with a dread-inducing rhythm that causes your head to throb and heart to pound in dread. The vibrant palette now appears leached of all color, replaced by a disturbing monochrome makes every creature on it seem like a hollow shell. The cheerful melodies are now a spectral lullaby that seduces you into a trance of sheer terror. The carnival workers, once radiating joy and bonhomie, morph into menacing entities that chill your veins. Their painted smiles, once welcoming, now stretch grotesquely wide as if strained by a malevolent secret. Their laughter now carries an ominous echo, resonating with an unspoken threat. Their eyes, once warm and friendly, now sparkle with malicious intent, seeming to penetrate your very being. The patrons, those brave or misguided souls who dare to linger past dusk, begin to disappear, seemingly consumed by the encroaching shadows of the carnival. Buzzing whispers and chilling rumors circulate of a diabolical secret, a spine-tingling conspiracy theory suggesting that the carnival is not simply a transient source of amusement but a mortal snare. The patrons, they whisper, don't merely attend the carnival. They become an integral part of its eternal, morbid showcase. They remain forever trapped, their laughter and screams reverberating through the carnival, their faces etched into the distorted mirrors, their souls enslaved in this horrific nightmare. As darkness descends, the carnival sheds its cloak of joy, revealing a house of unspeakable horrors that feeds off your deepest fears. But the most terrifying revelation lurks until the dawn's ethereal awakening. This is the moment when the tangible universe collides with the spectral realm, as the newborn light of the daybreak begins its battle against the stubborn shadows of the night, and the convoluted grotesque enigma of the carnival starts to unravel. As the maiden rays of the rising sun penetrate the black velvet shroud of the night, a petrifying metamorphosis initiates. From the instant the first sliver of pale daylight graces the distant horizon, the skeletal remnants of the once vibrant carnival initiate a chilling transformation. The carnival, once teeming with the eldritch energy of laughter, joy, and a smattering of terror, starts to disintegrate as though it were a mere phantasm, a specter of the night, fading away with the nocturnal secrets it had ensnared. The grand Ferris wheel that once loomed majestically over the town like a silent sentinel, the merry-go-round with its prancing horses trapped in a never-ending dance of delight, the haunting music of the steam organ that echoed through the narrow streets all vanish as though swallowed by the relentless morning mist. The candy floss stands, popcorn vendors, and the game stalls, each a testament to a night filled with diabolical pleasures, liquefy into oblivion. Not even a single forgotten ticket stub remains, as if every vestige of the sinister jamboree has been surgically erased by the purifying power of dawn. It's as if a colossal hand of an unseen power has wiped the slate clean, leaving no evidence of the night's phantasmagoric revelry. Yet it's not only the physical remnants of the carnival that vanish into thin air. The absent patrons, those who were lured by the promise of a night filled with thrill and excitement, have evaporated. They have been devoured by the night's grotesque spectacle, as if abducted by the spectral carnival itself. Only their whispers, their wails, their laughter, linger, reverberating through the deserted streets. A palpable silence descends on the town, clinging to the architecture and the empty streets like a funeral shroud. It's a silence that is punctuated only by the spectral whispers of the gruesome carnival that once held them hostage. The spine-chilling echoes of laughter and the sinister melodies of the steam organ, the ghastly groaning of the ferris wheel, they all resonate through the vacuum left behind by the vanished carnival. And when the dawn breaks, the carnival dissolves into nothingness, leaving behind a desolate ghost town and the chilling memory of a night that morphed dreams into nightmares. The ghost town, once lively with the bustling crowd, is now left abandoned. The sun tries to shine upon the deserted streets, but fails to erase the haunting memories. The town mourns in eternal silence, a tribute to the lives lost, a tragic ending to an enchanting beginning. The echoes of laughter and cries are a constant reminder of the night that transformed their lives forever etching a painful memory. The dawn brings light but no hope, only the chilling realization of a night that turned dreams into living nightmares. As the echoes of the spectral carnival dissipate into the ether, the town of North Bend is forever changed. The townsfolk, those who were fortunate enough not to be lured into the tantalizing spectacle, are left traumatized, 
their faces etched with paranoia and dread. Each creak of a door, each gust of wind, each rustle of leaves sends shivers down their spines as if the carnival could return at any moment to claim more victims. The memory of the carnival haunts their dreams, turning their nights into a perpetual nightmare. The laughter, the screams, the mesmerizing lights, the chilling music, all come back in their dreams, wrapping their unconscious minds in a shroud of terror. The faces of the missing are seen everywhere, in every shadow, every reflection, every corner, a constant reminder of the night's horrific spectacle. The town, once a beacon of life and joy, slowly decays under the weight of the haunting memory. The once bustling market is now deserted, the laughter of children replaced by a deafening silence. The lively taverns and inns are now empty, the joyous music and cheerful banter replaced by hushed whispers and fearful glances. The vibrant festivals and fairs are now a thing of the past, the fear of the carnival's return putting an end to any form of merriment. And so the town of North Bend remains, a hollow shell of its former self, forever scarred by the sinister carnival. Its streets are silent, its homes are empty, its people are lost in a state of perpetual fear. The once prosperous town is now a ghost town, a chilling monument to the night when dreams turned into nightmares.